Alright, so we're checking out this uh, ready to fly FPV starter kit from this company called Hi Singy. And it's called the Stargazer. And you know, got some cartoons here on the front of the box. Uh, for those of you that have stumbled across this video and are considering getting your journey into FPV started, this might be an interesting kit. I haven't flown it, I haven't even opened the box yet. I'm um, going to make this video from a sort of beginner's perspective, you know, what you're going to get in the box and we're going to see how useful this is going to be for you in terms of starting to learn how to fly FPV if that's what your ultimate goal is. Obviously for those of my longtime viewers that already know how to fly FPV, uh, this kit probably isn't going to be very useful for you. Um, not sure why you clicked on the video, but just in case you were wondering, I'll save you some time now. Uh, this is not going to be covering anything from an expert's, expert's perspective. It's going to be purely from a beginner's perspective. So for those of you that are new to FPV and are looking at a kit like this and wondering, should I try this out? Well, there's the video. This is, we're going to cover it from that perspective. And I guess we'll start by opening the box, doing an unboxing here, see what we got in the box here, and um, we get, get, get going from there. Now apparently, there's some app integration here. I guess you can get a app from the uh, App Store from iOS or Android, Google Play. And I guess there's some games you can play, etc. I believe there's also some skill building uh, tools in the way this is set up so that uh, as uh, your, uh, I guess, flying time increases and your skill increases, uh, certain features of the drone get unlocked. So we're going to take a look at that feature as well. All right, let's start by getting everything out of the box. Got a little QR code here. So this is step one, please watch this video. And then step two, download the app. Got an envelope here, a little welcome pack. Your journey starts here. So it looks like this is kind of a video game theme here. It says in 2335, the Earth's resources were exhausted, etc. So Sounds like a video game theme for this particular kit. And you got some cartoons here, a little bit of a, I'm not gonna go over the whole story here, but basically it uh, looks like the drone is based on some sort of video game. And it looks like there's some QR codes for the drone, the transmitter, and the goggles. Got a couple of these 18650 lithium ion cells. Imagine this is for the transmitter or the goggles. Comes with four batteries, and these are for the drone, including this bag here. Um, has some string on the side here to close it up, and I guess you can put all the drone stuff inside here for transportation. Now you can see all the components that come in the kit. So you got your headset, your goggles, and then you set, obviously you can see what's coming out of the camera from the drone, the FPV view. So you got your drone here, and you got your transmitter. Quick look at the transmitter. Got a centering throttle here, so. Obviously it has altitude hold, power button here, another button here. Got one big button here and two buttons over here. Looks like you got a USB-C port for charging. And I think this is where the battery goes. Yeah, so one of the 18 uh, 650s are gonna go in here in the back. Not sure you can see that, but the positive is on this side over here, which is gonna be this side of the battery. This side is the negative. Go ahead and pop it in. Here are the goggles. And the strap must be in there somewhere. Obviously, it's gonna you can need that to put that on your head. It's pretty basic here. You got some foam for your face. Uh, we'll see how I'll, I'll tell you a little later how it fits on my face at least. Area for your nose. This is where you're gonna pop in the battery. And you got a button down here, not sure what that does. Nothing here in the front. Probably antennas are inside. Got a button here. On the top, this one is probably for controlling the joystick for the menu, and then you got a channel scanner here. Nothing on this side or this side. Nice and it's a pretty nice, clean uh, goggle. Mm, looks like there's a little door over here. Yeah, I think there's a door here. I'm not sure what that's for, possibly for some sort of expansion accessory. You know, we'll go ahead and pop in the battery here. So if you're looking at the lens here, the positive is on this side. So you're gonna put the battery in like this. And should be able to charge it via USB-C on this port over here. All right, so the drone is on this little platform here in the middle. So you have to pull this little tab up to pull that drone out. And then underneath that is another box for your accessories. Here's a quick look at the drone. So we got brushless motors, 
tribulated props. You got a looks like probably an analog FPV camera here, and probably video transmitter. Battery just slots in. Looks like from the back side over here. Nice clean setup here. Not too heavy. All right. So inside the box that was holding the drone was the instruction manual, and it's really big. Uh, it has well, it's actually really well put together. Um, I didn't look over the whole thing, but it does cover all the different parts, uh, a lot of details, and uh, you know how to charge stuff. I'm going to cover all of these little sort of the, the I guess the things that you need to do to get started. I'm not going to cover every detail in the instruction manual that would just take too long. But mainly, if you sort of want to skip over all the stuff and you just want to get in the air, uh, again, I'd probably watch that. Um, step one video, please watch this video, this QR code. That covers the basics on getting the drone charged up and ready to fly. And then I will cover also that in this video. If you sort of want a, a briefer version, don't have to necessarily go through the whole manual. In the other box with the accessories, you get a set of spare propellers, and then you get some stickers here, decals for the drone and for the controller and goggles. This is the charging hub. This is where the batteries are going to slot into for charging. It looks like they go in like this. Pretty simple, very easy to use. And again, USB-C comes with the USB-C cable. It does not come with a power adapter, so you're going to need one of those cell phone chargers or something like that to uh, charge up the batteries. That's not included in the package as far as I could tell. Get a couple of these wedge or pieces of foam here. Uh, that are included. This is for the goggles to um, help you fill in the gaps here so to get a better fit in case it doesn't fit that well for you. So there's looks like there's some wedge pieces here. You may want to remove those if you if you want the uh, lens closer to your eyes or if you want it further away then uh, you can stick a, the additional wedge pieces in and that's just for, you know, to give you better fitment. Uh, so that's what those pieces are for and that other piece here is for the nose area here in case you want some padding there and then of course you get the strap for here so you can tie it to your head and in case you're wondering it looks like the battery just slot in like this the little pins are on the top like so looks like it only goes in one way I think if you try the other way it does not go in so it only goes in one way and I think you just put plug it in and then the drone turns on. I think it has to go through some calibration. The lights uh, are gonna yeah, flash here. I think when it turns solid is when the calibration is over. Yeah, now it's waiting for the transmitter. Turn on the transmitter here. Long press this button. Get some sounds. The transmitter actually vibrates. And I think when it's doing this sort of breathing light, I think that means it is ready. And then there's a button here that says engine start. Yeah, so you just use that, hold that button down, hear the beeps, starts the propeller spinning, and then you can just throttle up to take off. So uh, I think that's pretty much it in terms of getting the drone set up. We'll take a look at the goggles here next. All right, the goggles, I believe you just long press this button here. I should turn it on. And yeah, look, this lens here is preventing the camera from focusing on the screen. You can see it's an analog FPV feed. Let's just go ahead and we'll turn on the drone again. Turn on the transmitter first. And we're just plugging the battery. And we should get a video feed here. Okay, so it looks like there's no video feed. So I'm going to hit the... Uh, scan button here. So that changes the channel. So you can see the channel number here over in the upper left hand corner, channel two, three, four, five. Oh, there we go. And now we have our video signal. Yeah, the camera is having a hard time focusing due to that lens, but yeah, you see we have a video signal here and should be able to fly it. So if it isn't on the channel out of the box, just 
sure press this channel button, you should be able to get right into there. And I believe if you press the purple button here, it gets into the menu. All right, so the next thing we gotta do here is install the HiSingy app from the Play Store. Uh, there's probably another QR code for the uh, Apple Store. Uh, and here we need to add items uh, that were from the welcome kit, uh, basically on that last page. So here in the last page are these QR codes for each of the devices. Since we have all three, we're gonna add all of them. So we'll hit add item, brings up the camera, and then we should get this QR code here. And that's the controller, one item added. And try the goggles over here. All right, so got the goggles. And let's try the, con the drone again. Obviously, there we go, mini drone. All right. So now you have to have Bluetooth enabled on your phone and then you can connect to the drone and show the battery already plugged in. So we hit search. And there is Stargazer right there. Click on that, it'll connect. So you have to register the drone. Okay, we've registered the drone. Or hit register now. Now it says new flight controller firmware available. Um, sure, we'll go ahead and update it. And we'll have to wait for the firmware to download. Okay, so we have to wait for the... Alright, so after the firmware update is completed, the, the drone reboots and you hear the tones and it should reinitialize. So basically you need this app to be able to add the different components of your system and then it also to configure the drone. So you're gonna go in here and for example, if you want to change the speed, you can do that here. All right, so hit OK to connect to the drone. All right, so now we're connecting and here we can change the video channel settings. So obviously they have six channels here available they will leave it on, on one, because I'm not flying with anyone else. But if you have other people that have the same kit and you want to fly in different channels, you can each have, I guess, up to six pilots flying at the same time on the same Stargazer kit. And then there's this tuning set here, or tuning setting. So this is for basically your speed. So you can increase your speed. And it says here I don't have enough PP or points. So I guess it wants you to fly a certain amount of time before it will let you increase the speed, which makes sense. Obviously, you don't want an inexperienced pilot to uh, make the drone super fast. It'll just be hard to control, they'll just crash. Here's some general settings here. You can change your LED color, give your drone a name. So we have sport mode available, it looks like it's off. Collision protection. And then this is the stick mode for the controller. Mode two is standard for most controllers. And then over here, you can check for your firmware updates. Now I've heard that there is a way to put a cheat code in here somehow to give you all the points if you already know how to fly. So that probably doesn't apply to most people that are just starting out. So I would just go through and give this a bunch of flights, gather some points, and then increase your speed um, as you improve your skill level. All right, something to note on the goggles here. Uh, this is pretty typical for these sort of box style goggles. I usually include this lens here for focusing on the screen without making the, the box goggle really large. But the, it, the disadvantage of this design is that for those of us that wear glasses, this uh, might not work so well. So with the, this lens in here, I'm not able to see the screen when I'm not wearing my glasses and my glasses do not fit in this opening. There might be some smaller glasses that might fit into this opening, but mine do not. However, I, I've i had this sort of style of goggles before and if you just remove this lens here, which I don't need, now I'm able to see the screen clearly. Now this might not work for you. I happen to have what they call old eyes and basically I can wear, I don't have to wear glasses, I can see the screen perfectly clearly without my glasses with if I take this lens off. Now there's a couple of notches, here's one over here and then two on the bottom that hold this in place and it's pretty easy to pop out and that's all I did. So if you're having trouble seeing the screen, it's blurry with the lens on, 
and you wear glasses and obviously you can't put your glasses in here um, then take this lens out and you'll be good it might be good it, everyone's eyes are different obviously the, uh, the other solution is to wear your contact lenses so you have your 2020 vision with the lenses in there and then the screen should be perfectly visible just a little note on the goggles it's pretty common so you know there might be other solutions out there for those of you that have issues with um, blurry vision on these goggles but this is the one that worked for me all right so i'm gonna do a quick test flight uh they actually covered this in the step one video so go ahead and watch that if you want more details but essentially uh to fly it uh you go well, i'll tell you how to take it off but once you get it in the air uh the right stick makes the the drone go right and left like this if you move it right and left if you move it up and down it makes the drone pitch forward and backwards like this the left stick is yaw so right and left we'll spin it right and left so it'll spin it like this and then the throttle up will increase the altitude the throttle down will decrease the altitude and this button here starts the motors all right so we'll go ahead and throw, uh, arm the motors and throttle up so it's pretty easy to maintain a hover really hands-free here but it does drift does not have position hold and we're going to land it to bring, bring it bring it down we can throttle down like this and eventually it will land and then the motor will turn off so pretty basic you want to obviously do it in a larger area not going to be bumping the stuff and crashing and things and you do you will need to have a little bit of control in terms of uh, moving it around because it does not maintain its position does not have position hold as far as i can tell uh, but it does have altitude hold three weeks later all right so after i've been kind of flying this around for a little bit i can kind of gauge um how well this kit is overall and give him sort of my comparisons to some of the other kits that i've flown in the past and maybe give you some recommendations on whether or not this is going to be for you or if you might want to maybe perhaps look at some other kits so first off let's lay off the off, off the bat i just want to let you guys know this is probably one of the most polished kits i've seen in terms of ready to fly um, it doesn't remind me of anything that I've seen coming from any of the, the sort of hobby grade companies like Beta FPV or Emacs. This is, they, they've kind of taken a different approach here. It's more like a like a video game company making a drone versus a drone company making a starter kit. And I think that is kind of where they're kind of targeting the where with the right person or the right pilot this would be for. So. In my opinion, based on um, all of the, the sort of starter kits that I've tested in the past, and I've tested a lot of them, and I'll put a link to all those down in the video description if you guys happen to want to check out some of the other ones. This one here, I think, is going to be best for someone that's like a, like a kid, um, maybe elementary school, middle school, somewhere in there. Um, someone that is maybe into video games you know um because this definitely has, has, got, has a video game theme it has all these like sort of uh, goals and achievements that you can do in the app to gain points so this is this is definitely targeting that kind of a person and this is going to get people up in there fairly quickly because it has that altitude hold feature where it can maintain the basically the uh, the height of the drone off the ground now that is a positive now that but uh, at the same time um you still need to be able to control the drone and make sure that you can move it around within at least 2d space within that altitude and i can tell you that um unless especially well if you've never flown anything before you will still be able to crash this even with altitude hold because it is um while it is fairly easy uh, you know compared to a lot of other kits i think that for for the for a first timer if you're going to fly this i would fly this in like a, a pretty open spaced room like over carpet 
Um, not a lot of objects in the way because uh, I can pretty much guarantee that if you give this to a kid for the first time, uh, they'll crash it a few times for sure um, before they get the hang of it. Now, once you get the hang of it, it's very easy to fly uh, with altitude hold. It's super, super easy. Um, now, the downside to this is that, well, it's okay. So the upside is you'll be able to get, get up and running and flying pretty quickly on this kit uh, with the altitude hold feature. The downside to this is that um, if you eventually want to fly like a regular FPV drone, like one of those hobby green drones that I reviewed on my channel many, many times, this, um, I guess these features that make the drone easy to fly for a first timer will become a hindrance later if you want to learn how to fly an actual FPV drone. So that's something to keep in mind. So if your goal is to eventually fly like a real FPV drone, uh, I would not recommend getting this kit. You're kind of wasting your time and then you become dependent on these features like altitude hold to maintain the, the flight of the drone for you. And later on, when you want to learn how to fly a real FPV drone, they become roadblocks and it's very hard. Basically you learn bad habits and very hard to break those bad habits once you become dependent on those features. So again, if your goal is to eventually fly an FPV drone, I, I would not recommend this kit. Now, if your goal is not, not that, you just want to just fly around, you don't care about like being a, you know, an acro pilot or flying in manual mode, you just want to fly around, you want to just, you're impatient and you just want to do it quickly, then yes, this kit will definitely accomplish that for you, uh, for sure. You'll have no problems getting up in the air eventually. This is fairly crash resistant. If you, if you crash, you bounce into something, the motors turn off right away. Um, I did, you know, did some test crashes into like my sofa and yeah, the motors cut off and no damage. Now, if you hit a, a solid wall, mm, yeah, you're probably gonna break something. Um, depends, and if you hit like, like a hardwood floor, you might break something because it's plastic. But again, every crash is different. It depends on how hard, how fast you're going and how hard you, you crash. So I can't guarantee that it'll hold up. I didn't do that kind of testing. I just threw it into like, you know, my sofa and it seemed fine. Now, you know, if you're kind of looking for something like this, but maybe something cheaper, uh, this I, there's another drone that I reviewed not too long ago. Um, it was another kit from Makerfire. It's called the Armor Blue. I'll put that link in the video description. It's a very cheap kit. Uh, it's not as nice and polished. This one's like $80. So you're getting a lot less for your money, um, but you're paying a lot less as well. So this is like 350 for the Stargazer. And that kit, which, you know, again, I'll, you should watch that review. It has the altitude hole feature. So it does, does, it's very similar in the way this kit will work in terms of getting up in there very quickly. But again, the downside is if you want to eventually fly an FPV drone, you're going to you know, be dependent on that feature and kind of, you know, um, yeah, it makes it harder later on. Now, if you want to go in the opposite direction and you want to be, you want to get up in the air super, super easy, there's another kit called the Beta FPV Cetus Pro that not only has the altitude hold feature, it has position hold, so basically almost acts like a DJI drone. So for those of you that are like DJI pilots, camera drone pilots, you just want to get something up in the air, just kind of, kind of cruise around. That might be a kit you might want to check out. It's similar in price to this one, but it does have that position hold feature so that when you're in that position hold mode, it just takes off and hovers there and doesn't move around. So it's really hard. Actually, it's actually pretty hard to crash if uh, if you're in that mode. You have to actually force it into a wall or something because it, uh, it maintains its position and altitude. So that's kind of the other way you can go. But then again, that makes it even worse later if you, or if you eventually want to fly in manual mode to fly a real FPV drone you're going to be, you know, you're going to be dependent on those features and it's going to be harder for you to learn how to actually fly an FPV drone. Anyway, I'll link all those videos down in the video description. You guys can sort of, you know, give, you know, take my advice to heart and see what might work best for you. Cause you know, can, uh, everyone's different with their needs are going to be different. And, uh, this kit might be for you. It might not be for you. So hopefully the information provided in this video has helped you with that decision. Um, if you did, if it did help you, you know, please give the video a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And, you know, subscribe to the channel. I you know, do a lot of videos like this where I review these kits and I give you my sort of thoughts and comparisons to a lot of the other things that I reviewed in the past. 
And hopefully that'll help you make a better decision in terms of what you're doing with your money. All right, it's gonna cover for this video. Talk to you guys in the next one.